Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again. After my previous No Time to Die update vlog, which was all about how director Kerry Fukunaga had come out and said that the film was not going to be undergoing any more reshoots or edits, it's basically under lock and key until its release date. After I made that video, I kind of sat back and thought, well, that's the last update video for Bond 25 for some time, but uh, true to form, <laughs> uh, sure enough, um, a month later, another spanner is thrown into the works. So yeah, lest there be a dull moment as we wait for the release of the new Bond film. Um, the theatrical release of No Time to Die was kind of thrown into a bit of doubt this week as um, cinema chains came out against comments made by um, a bigwig at Universal about how the film studio may take up distributing films through streaming services as well as their simultaneous theatrical release in future. How does this affect Bond? Well, Universal are distributing the film throughout much of the world, um, and so obviously it's a problem for people like me in the UK, where Universal is going to be distributing this film, um, if half of the cinema chains that are available are not going to show the film. So this came after one of the Universal bosses was uh, giving an interview, and he talked about how the Trolls film had done really well going straight to the streaming service, so they might take to simultaneously releasing films on digital platforms as well as their theatrical release. And obviously this annoyed some cinema chains who then came out and said, well, we're not even going to show you films anyway. Which seems like a bit of a odd stance to take. Like, um, oh, we're, we're really annoyed that you know, we might lose money from, you know, showing your films, so we're just not going to show your films at all? Universal obviously have some really big franchises under their belt as well, with um, the Jurassic World franchise now, Fast and the Furious, and obviously they're going to be releasing this new Bond film. So I think one of the things to say up front about this is that this is definitely not the first time that cinema chains have gotten into a quarrel with a big studio about distribution. Um, I remember several years ago, I think it was on the back of the Timber and Alice in Wonderland that came out uh, quite some time ago now, after that, there were some cinema chains here in the UK that uh, got into a bit of a feud with Disney, and they were saying, well, we're not going to show your films because Disney were reducing the uh, window in between the cinema release and the home media release of some of their films, and some cinema chains were getting pissed off about that. Um, that all ended up being resolved, and I feel like this probably will... Obviously, Trolls made a lot of money on the streaming service, but then you also have to look at, you know, families around the world are in lockdown and in need of some new entertainment to keep the kids entertained. So, it, 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 I, you know, um, it was kind of a foolproof release, um, I, I think. We haven't yet had a big budget action spectacle that was intended for cinema go to the streaming service, like a big franchise yet, um, like a Marvel or Bond, Jurassic Park, anything like that. And I think whenever that happens, then it will be quite telling as to whether or not other studios jump on that bandwagon as well. Right now, for a film with the budget of No Time to Die, with a huge budget, it kind of needs to go to a theatrical release to kind of make its money back, basically. Uh, it's not going to recoup its costs on you know uh, a premium uh, streaming sites, it's just not going to happen. So pe people and people are still kind of talking about, like, oh, just release it on VOD. Let's just get it on Netflix. Uh, that kind of thing. It, that, that, it, it, that, I mean, that would be an absolute last resort scenario for everyone involved with No Time to Die. They are going to want this theatrical experience to happen. Um, there is still a good element of prestige that comes with a theatrical release, I think. And Bond is known for glitzy premieres, these big spectacle premieres, and they're almost certainly going to want to do that. Exactly how they do it might be quite different. So if the news about the whole cinema thing wasn't bad enough, a few days later there were articles going around talking about how the release date of No Time to Die may be pushed back yet again uh, to 2021. And obviously this is to do with the virus and kind of what state the cinema entertainment industry is going to be in towards the end of this year because, quite frankly, nobody knows. The thing that the people in the positions of power are having to kind of gauge, I suppose, or guess, actually, is probably a, a, a more apt word. This is all kind of gambling stuff at, 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 at this um, stage, really, um, and there are absolutely no loaded dice on this backgammon table, but what the people in the positions of power are having to kind of gauge is what the theatrical experience 
experience is going to look like in November as we're in these completely unprecedented times. Will there be an appetite from a large section of the public to go to a cinema, to be, you know, um, you know cooped up in a, in a big room with a few dozen of the people while this virus is still going around? Uh, and what if social distancing measures are still in place? How do you manage that? You can't pack out a cinema on opening night if, for example, there has to be an empty seat in between everyone in the, sc in the screening room. It'll be quite telling in the next few months as public spaces start to kind of slowly reopen. Bond relies so heavily on international markets uh, and it's going to be looking at Universal, MGM, E.ON, they're going to be looking at what the um, entertainment industries look like reopening in various different countries, what kind of money they're bringing in, if there's audience appetite to go to the cinema still, and I think that will that, that will be the deciding factor in whether or not this film gets pushed back another, what, six months? And like I say, there is not going to be a very big appetite from the distributors to release this thing on a streaming service. They will lose an awful lot of money if they do that. Uh, I think even if they have to push it back a whole of the year to November 2021, I think they will do that. And maybe it's right that they do that. We all want to have the No Time to Die big cinematic theatrical experience. And we want to do that in a safe as possible way. So maybe we do just kind of have to fold our arms and, and put up with the delay. As frustrating as this all is. I, I, it, it, I mean, it, it's tough to get too angry about it because like I say, no one wants to, re you know, no one is sort of like waking up in the morning, rubbing their hands thinking, oh, I can't wait for an excuse to delay this film anymore. No, it's costing the studios involved money to keep postponing this thing. It's costing them a lot of money to, to do this. They want to get it out there as soon as possible and, you know, cash that billion dollar check that they get from the uh, box office returns. Fans want it, general audiences want it. Um, and I think after, a you know, this drought of cinematic big experiences it it might well mop up if it if it ends up being released in a in a safe environment in november so it's hard to be too annoyed about that kind of thing it, it's nothing that you know I, I i i i'm not very um philosophical or anything but i do try to not get angry about things angry or upset about things that i basically have no way of possibly changing um focus energies on the things that you can change i suppose rather than the things that you can't anyway in lighter news kerry fukunaga gave a really bizarre interview recently this was with miranda july of interview magazine and it, it's kind of an odd interview it reads more like a, a transcript between two friends just like having a chin wag uh, but there was one bit where fukunaga talks about how uh well the exact quote is i swear to god i had an idea that this movie could all be taking place inside the villain's lair from the last film there's this scene where a needle goes into james bond's head which is supposed to make him forget everything and then he miraculously escapes by a watch bomb and then he and leia blow up the place and go and save the day, I was like, what if everything up until the end of Act 2 is all inside his head? And whilst I wouldn't be entirely opposed to just uh, scrapping the uh, third act of Spectre from the whole Daniel Craig continuity, that is quite a, quite a bizarre musing from the director. I don't know how seriously to take this. I feel like there have been a lot of interviews with cast and crew from No Time to Die who've kind of just said these very sort of out outlandish, um, ridiculous things, and I think a lot of it is to just kind of get a reaction, get a response, get people talking about it, and I think this is another one of those. So what say you to that? Would you want uh, two-thirds of a Bond film to all be a dream, all be in 007's head? I can't imagine that there is anyone else on Earth who thought that that might be a good idea. So maybe this will be the last No Time To Die update news vlog I make for a while, or maybe next week there'll be some other kind of uh, terrible thing that befalls this production. Maybe an asteroid will land on the building containing the only known copy of the film. Uh, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Uh, but this film really just, it's a kite dancing in a hurricane, quite frankly. 
So what do you think about this potential release date change? I can't imagine that anyone out there is, you know, over the moon about it, but um, if, if it's for the sake of everyone's safety and the maximum success of the film, like, those are two things we all kind of want, and if it's inevitable, it's inevitable. But as always, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, and below are also links to my various social media pages, so if you want to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, you can do so by following the links below, and if you want to go one extra step in supporting this channel, then please do head over to my Patreon page. Until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.